Hey, this is Gino, and today we're going to talk about the Nocturne Atomic Brain Guitar Preamp Pedal. So stick around. Alright, so this gentleman named Tabo from Southern California builds custom boutique pedals, amplifiers, and all sorts of great guitar gear. He's a big fan of Brian Setzer and the Stray Cats, and for a long time he was chasing Brian's tone, trying to sort of emulate it, figure out what the missing ingredient was from the sound. Of course, you can take an old Gretsch guitar, plug it into an old Fender amp, throw some slapback echo on there, and you're partially on the way there. But there's always something missing. In his research, Tavo figured out that the missing part was the echo unit that Brian used. Brian used an old Roland 301 Space Echo. Now, it wasn't so much the actual slap or the echo effect that was really doing it, it was the preamp of this old unit. Even when Brian's not using the actual echo sound, the signal still runs through the preamp, giving him a little extra sauce on the tone. So Tavo came up with this idea and he designed a pedal that emulates the preamp, essentially, of the old Space Echo. Now, his original version was called the Nocturne Dynabrain. Really nice one button little pedal, preamp, set it and forget it type of thing. But a lot of people were asking him for a version of it that might have a lead boost or a solo boost, an extra button. So he came out with the Atomic Brain. It's the original Dyna Brain preamp, uh, but it has an extra button on it called Abbey. Get it? Abbey channel. There's a normal channel. The Abbey channel increases the gain input sensitivity. Essentially what that does is it's widening up the gates for your, how hard you pick or how hard you're going to play. You play lighter, you can have less effect. You hit harder, it's going to kick in more. It's going to give you a little more grit in that sound. Perfect for leads, solos, and cutting through the rest of the band when you need to. And you can kick that on and off. It also features the level knob and a bass cut knob. Bass cut. I was never really sure what the heck that did. Um, except that it does affect the tone a bit. I had to ask Tavo exactly what it was because I don't know things. So I'm going to read you right here. It says here that the bass cut is a low mids filter, essentially. Not really a bass cut, like a normal, regular bass control. You crank it all the way up, you get more bass, crank it all the way down, and you get less bass or more treble, depending upon the unit. This is doing something a little bit different. It's actually contouring the tone a little bit. Um, so you can dial it in depending upon what amp you use. If you have a smaller amp, that with a lot of low end, a lot of mids will make sort of a unusable sound. You can dial this tone cut knob back a little bit or up depending upon the size of the amp, whether it's an open back or closed back and really dial in your sound for that. All right, well, that's enough of me talking about it. We're gonna plug this in and see what it sounds like. All right, so we got my uh, Gretsch my G6220 Hot Rod Roman Red. It's a little customized. It's not quite stock, but uh, pickups are stock. Sets her signature pickups. Um, ran through my Fender Deluxe Reverb Reissue SM57 microphone. And um, I put the pedal back on my board because that's where it lives. It's always there. I don't leave home without that. Um, so we're gonna run through it. I'll add some of the other effects in as we go and we'll see what we can get. So here's the clean sound without that pickup. And uh, here is the brain in normal with controls at noon. Put a little echo on it and 
guess what? Personally, with my deluxe amp, I roll this all the way up on the bass and um, I drive at about uh, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Here's without. Here's with. This gives a little bit more uh, rounder sound, a little fuller, a little more girth. so much with a smaller amp like say with a Princeton or a smaller combo amp you really got to dial that back or else it's it's gonna fart out it's gonna make some not pleasant sounds but on my deluxe I find that it works really well kick in the Abbey mode suggest putting the overdrive after the preamp um, I'm pretty sure that's the way Tavo himself does it and a lot of guys do I've just from experimentation realized I like having the overdrive in front of the preamp um, just to my ears that works better of course I run it pretty low I, I don't really crank the overdrive on this um, I have figured out that with a heavier distortion or say a fuzz pedal or something like that you do want to put it after the preamp it's gonna react a lot better that way but that being said this is how I run it. This is my day-to-day -day rig. This pedal never leaves my site. It's always on there. Um, and I always have the normal on. It's an always-on pedal. Um, and then I just use the Abbey for lead boosts and, and solos here and there. Thanks again for watching. 
Um, make sure you stick around after this. There's a little more footage of me using this exact setup that we just talked about in a live situation. I think you'll enjoy that. Please also give me a thumbs up and a like on this video, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, I'll see you next time.